When importers buy products from international suppliers, it's imperative that they understand the final landed cost of the imported products in advance to make smart decisions in their business. A landed cost is the term used when referring to the total cost of a product once it has arrived at its final destination. A landed cost will include the supplier's product cost, plus all of the associated shipping and logistics fees, customs clearance, import duties, taxes, and final delivery costs. By accurately understanding landed costs, importers will be able to analyze landed costs, sell pricing and profit figures, to analyze opportunities and make decisions on which products to import, build a comprehensive business plan, including sales and marketing plans, understand the capital required to invest in purchasing and shipping products to the final destination, to create purchasing and logistics plans to match demand forecasts. Calculating landed costs of imported products requires a detailed analysis of all expenses involved in the process of importing goods beyond just the product's purchase price. Understanding accurate calculations ensures accurate pricing, profitability, and financial planning. In this video, I'll cover how to assess a supplier's export quotation, understanding shipment types, including FCL versus LCL shipping and maximum container capacities, understanding international shipping charges, fees, import duties, and taxes, understanding foreign exchange rates and fees, a step-by-step -step guide to using the Incodocs landed cost calculator to work out landed costs, sell pricing and profit amounts, completing market research, import feasibility and purchase order planning. To start, when importers source new products, the exporter must confirm all of their product details, pricing, shipping information and terms of trade. To avoid any misunderstandings, the exporter should provide a quotation or perform an invoice document that clearly states all of the information required. This will ensure that there are no disputes relating to product quality, specifications, pricing and delivery terms, and it will also help you to do your landed cost calculations. The supplier's quotation or pro forma invoice document should include seller and buyer's details, all product details, including product descriptions, quantities, unit types, pricing and currency, the INCO term and place, the shipment type, for example, by FCL full container or by LCL shipping, port of loading and port of discharge, packaging sizes, so that you can use that to work out each unit's volume and weight, lead times required to manufacture the products and have them ready for export, payment terms, including method of payment and bank details. When the cubic volume and weight of the cargo is known, an importer should understand the best method of shipping and the freight costs to move the cargo. If the total cubic measurement of the cargo is relatively small, an LCL shipping may be used to ship the goods to their final destination. LCL shipping will be charged based on the exact cubic size or weight of the cargo. The freight company will charge the freight per one meter cube or per 1000 kilograms, whichever is greater. LCL can be a good option when shipping only a few pallets of cargo. However, if the overall size or weight of the cargo is quite high, it will be more cost effective to ship the cargo via FCL full container load in a 20 foot, 40 foot or other sized shipping container. FCL shipping will be charged to move the whole container from port of loading to port of discharge. When shipping full containers, it's nearly impossible to utilize 100% of the shipping containers loading capacity. There will always be some empty space left in between the different packages. So when planning the loading of shipping containers, as a general rule, the maximum usable capacity of a container is around 80% of the maximum capacity. For example, a 20 foot general purpose shipping container can hold a maximum capacity of around 33 meters cubed. However, the maximum usable capacity is only around 27 meters cubed. A 40 foot high cube container, which is around 40 centimeters taller than a general purpose container, can hold a maximum capacity of around 77 meters cubed. 
However, the maximum usable capacity is only around 61 meters cubed. To help with cubic meter calculations and container load planning, you can use the free cubic meter calculator at incodocs.com. Once you have all of the product and pricing details confirmed from the supplier, you must check all of the additional shipping and logistics costs to get the product shipped through to their final destination. You can contact a shipping company or freight forwarder to get a confirmed quotation to get the product shipped through to your door. A freight company's quote will often include many different fees and charges, often in multiple currencies. The quote document should be itemized to show all of the different fees and charges involved with delivering the shipment through to the final agreed destination. A quote is typically made up of international freight from port of loading to the port of discharge, which is usually in US dollars. Note that sea freight and air freight rates are only valid for a set period of time, so be sure to confirm the validity dates of a freight forwarder's quotation. Local fees and charges in the country of import, make sure these costs are in your local currency. These fees typically include local port handling fees, documentation and customs clearance fees, any applicable biosecurity or quarantine fees, domestic trucking delivery fees, etc. Local import duty rates. To confirm the import duty rate that applies to the imported products, you will need to classify the goods with the customs department of the importing country. The supplier may help to provide part of the HS code classification, or you can also ask a local customs broker to classify the goods and confirm the applicable percentage of import duty that will be applied to the imported goods. Note that the import duty rate can be charged on the FOB or the CFR value in your local currency, depending on the country of import. So make sure that you confirm with your freight forwarder or customs broker. Note that in the country of export and the country of import have a current free trade agreement in place, it can reduce or eliminate the import duty rate that is payable. Import taxes. Understand the local percentage tax rate that is charged on imported goods and how it is applied to the imported goods in the country of import. Purchasing products from an international supplier usually requires making payments in US dollars, which may require exchanging currencies. To understand the product cost in your local currency, you'll have to understand the currency exchange rates and fees that you can secure when making FX payments. Let's look at a simple example. A supplier's FOB proforma invoice is showing a product cost of 13,820 US dollars. I'm wanting to make a swift TT payment using my Australian dollar funds. When checking the live exchange rate or the interbank rate, it shows the exchange rate as 0.65. But when using a foreign exchange provider, they offer me a spot rate of 0.63 to exchange currencies plus a $30 fee to make the payment. So using that spot rate, paying the supplier's invoice will cost in Australian dollars $21,936.50 plus a $30 transfer fee. As foreign exchange rates can be volatile, you should take the time to understand how fluctuating exchange rates will affect the cost of your transfers. Do your research to confirm the best foreign exchange rates and fees that you can secure from FX payment providers, along with payment processing times. Traditionally, making SWIFT TT payments would take around four to five days to clear into the seller's bank account. However, this is being reduced to only a few days. Here, I'll run you through an example of how to use the IncoDocs landed cost calculator to make it quick and easy to understand the landed costs, sell pricing and profit amounts. In this example, I'll use a supplier's proforma invoice for a 20-foot container of bollards shipped from China to Australia. Before using a landed cost calculator, make sure that you understand all of the seller's product details, pricing and packaging details, the international transportation costs, local customs clearance and handling and logistics fees, foreign exchange rates, and the applicable import duty and tax rates that are payable in the country of import. Once known, you can enter all of the information to calculate your landed costs and sell pricing. When I have all of the details confirmed, 
I'm ready to enter the information into the calculator. At the top section, I enter the shipment details. Description, country of origin, China, country of destination, Australia. You'll note that the tax will automatically default to 10% GST tax. Then I select the INCO term, FOB, the product buy currency in US dollars. The final local currency will automatically default to AUD and note that the live exchange rate will automatically apply between USD and AUD. International freight, this is the amount charged for the sea freight from port to port. In this case, I know the amount in AUD is $1,900. Local import costs. This is the total of all of the charges incurred when the container is unloaded in Australia, including port handling charges, customs clearance fees, local trucking delivery, etc. In the table below is where I enter all of the product details from the supplier's quote or pro forma invoice. If I have already created my product codes, I can click to select them from my list of products to pre-fill the information. Note that the cubic meters per unit is pre-selected by default. That means that all of the additional freight and import costs will be split over the different products based on each product's cubic meter volume per unit. If I wanted to split up the additional freight costs by weight, I can select the per weight unit option. I'll enter the quantity of the first product. Duty rate. Due to the China Australia Free Trade Agreement, I know that the import duty rate is 0%. Otherwise, I could enter a percentage for import duty rates here. Then I can keep adding new product lines as needed. Note that the totals will show at the bottom of this table. When I'm finished adding all information, click Calculate, then my landed costs will show in the second table below. In the second table, it will give me my landed cost per product, along with a breakdown of all of the additional costs per product unit. In this column, I can see the landed cost of each item in my local currency, line by line. On the left, I can see that the buy price of my first bollard is $15.85 USD from the seller, but by the time the currency is converted and all of the additional shipping and import costs are added, I can see the landed cost of this bollard through to my door is $28.51 AUD. Note that the totals will also show at the bottom of this table. If I'm going to on-sell these products in the market, I can move down to the third table to calculate my sell pricing and profit figures. Note that I have three options to set a sell price. I can click to enter a margin percentage for each product. I can click to enter a markup percentage for each product. Or I can click to type in a specific sell price for each product. This is very flexible and helpful when wanting to enter different margin or markup amounts to each product so that I can check figures and decide on my sell pricing for each product. Let's say that I want to add a 15% margin to the two bollard products, and I want to add a 22% margin to the accessories. On the left, I can see my landed cost per item. Then I can see the sell pricing to the right. I can also understand the profit per unit and the total profit figures per product. It's very flexible and easy to change the sell pricing of any product so that I can see the live profit figures and make decisions on my sell pricing. Note that the totals will show at the bottom of this table. 
So looking at all of the figures across the three tables, I can view all of the important information needed. At the first table, I can see the total costs, weight and cubic size from the supplier. At the second table, I can see the landed cost per item and the total landed cost to import these products to my door. At the third table, I can see the sold pricing and profit figures per unit and as totals. So when finished, I just click save. Then I can click to download the PDF calculations into a document. Understanding landed costs will allow you to take the next steps to do market research and make decisions in your business. Before you decide to import products, make sure that you complete comprehensive market research. Evaluate your target market to understand customer demand, competition and price points to ensure that you are selecting products with long-term potential. Use the landed cost to determine the feasibility of bringing your product to market. Compare your landed costs with the market pricing to ensure that there's enough profit to create a sustainable business. Set your sell pricing and profit margins, ensuring that there's room for profit after taking into account the business's sales, marketing and operational costs. When deciding which products to import, focus on products that are in demand, not highly competitive and leave you with a healthy profit. If the numbers don't work, it's okay to move on to a better opportunity. You also need to plan for the capital that will be required to purchase the goods and ship them through to their final destination. Consider if your purchases will be funded with cash or debt facilities. Plan your cash flow, taking into account the supplier's lead time, shipping times, plus the time it takes to sell the products and get cash back into your bank account. If the landed costs, sell pricing and profit amounts make sense and align with your business plan and goals, you can make decisions to move forward and create a purchasing plan. This will allow importers to place purchase orders with order quantities that match sales demand, to schedule shipments with suppliers, and to plan to allow enough capital to fund the products, plus all of the additional shipping and logistics fees over time. Good luck with your imports.